Irma? Irma? Yes, Jane? Honey, where are you going with that pot roast? Downstairs. I have to cook it on the furnace downstairs in the basement. Downstairs in the basement? Yes, the recipe says to cook it over a low fire. Well, that's what you can expect when you listen to my friend, Irma. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend presents... Our friend Swan. With my friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. You know, a lot of people like to live in the country... But me, Jane Stacy, give me New York. You can do the same things in New York that you can do in the country. Right now, I'm on the roof of our brownstone taking an early morning sun bath. Oh, I'm just stretched out here. I've got all the privacy in the world. On my right is a billboard. On my left is a blank wall of a warehouse. And right in front of me, holy mackerel, it's the YMCA. <laughs> Outside of the track, I've never seen so many spy glasses. <laughs> well, but so what? I'm not frustrated. So I'm an eyeful in a bathing suit. Oh, I feel wonderful and alive because spring has come around. Of course, I'd feel a lot better if spring came around and brought me a fellow with it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a beautiful day. Oh, look at that little squirrel scampering up that tree. <laughs> Probably looking for a nut. <laughs> Which reminds me, maybe Irma would like to come up on the roof and take a sun bath. <laughs> Think I'll get her. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> Irma! Irma, honey, it's a glorious day. What are you doing in bed? I think I'm sick, Jane. Oh, really? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. Maybe you overate last night. Maybe. On second thought, that's impossible. Al bought your dinner. <laughs> well, uh, how, how, how do you feel, honey? Have you a pain in any particular place? No, I hurt all over. My pains aren't particular. Oh. <laughs> that's too bad. Well, maybe you'd feel better if you got up, huh? Here's your robe. Thanks, Jane. Now, how about some coffee? No, thanks. Want me to make you some tea? No. Milk? No. I came into the world without anything. I might as well go out the same way. <laughs> oh, honey, don't be dramatic. But I do feel sick, Jane. Well, then, gee, I don't think you should go to work. Now, I won't go either. I'll stay home and I'll take care of you, huh? I'll call your boss, Mr. Clyde. I'll tell him you're not coming in. Oh, I'd better speak to him, Jane. He won't know where anything is. Oh, yes, I forgot you have your own filing system. <laughs> Hello? Milton J. Clyde, attorney at law. Mr. Clyde, this is me, Irma Peterson. She asked me to tell you she won't be in today because she's sick. <laughs> Have you any messages you'd like delivered to her? Miss Peterson, I would know that voice any place. The only thing I want from you is if you'll kindly tell me where you put a few things, and I'll be very happy to try to get by without you for the day. Well, I'd be glad to help. Fine. Now, where is the carbon copy of the letter you mailed to Mr. Alba? On the other side of his letter. I had the carbon paper in backwards. <laughs> That's par for you. Now, uh, tell me, uh, what did you do with that check for $1,000 which I got from Mrs. Van Gogh? Oh, that check was no good. What are you talking about? It was certified. Well, there were a lot of little holes in the check, so I threw it away. <laughs> After all, I'm not stupid. <laughs> Mr. Clyde? Hello? Are you there? Yes, but I'm on my knees. <laughs> Just one more question. What did you do with my papers on Universal Copper? Where did you file them? Just where they belong, in the filing cabinet under A. Under A? Of course. Copper is made to make pennies. And whose picture is on the penny? Lincoln's. That's right. And what's his first name? Abraham. <laughs> so look under A. 
<laughs> you see how easy these things are when we work together? Mr. Clyde? Mr. Clyde, where are you? I'm on the floor. <laughs> At least pay me the courtesy of hanging up so I can call the doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Was he angry, honey? No, he's just a big-hearted sentimentalist. Sentimentalist? Yes, every time I talk to him, he cries. Oh. <laughs> Jane, I think I'll lie down. I just feel bad all over, like an old horse ready for pasture. Grand. I'll go and buy a saddle, and we'll take a ride in Central Park. <laughs> On you. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little air conditioners. One breezy, the other with a dent in the vent. <laughs> Irma, my darling little pigeon, what's the matter with you? You are lying there like a dead herring. I'm sick, Professor. Well, I'm no doctor, but let me give you some advice. As you know, when I was a little child, I was raised by a band of gypsies. And every time we got sick, they used to give us a pinch of barley root in a glass of vodka. Oh, those wonderful epidemics we had. <laughs> oh, I think I will take her to a doctor, Professor. Maybe she needs a blood count or a basal metabolism. Oh, Jane, why do I need a nasal metabolism? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my breathing. I'm just sick all over. Run down. Probably haven't got enough blood. You know, like when you're suffering from magnesia. <laughs> Anemia, honey. Irma, my darling, most diseases are mental. What you should do is think of something real pleasant. Like you and Al are married. Me and Al married. There, you look better already. N now you're having a big wedding reception. All your friends are there. All my friends. And then on the table in front of you, they put a gorgeous wedding cake six feet high. <laughs> Irma, Irma, why are you crying? All that wonderful cake, and I'm too sick to eat any. <laughs> oh, honey. Come in. Hello, Janie and Irma. Oh, there you are, Professor. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. O'Reilly. Wait, this is... nothing. This poem you shoved under my door. Hm, you've got your nerve. Girls, listen to this. Roses are red, violets are blue. How many more years must I wait for you? <laughs> Why, that sounds lovely. What's wrong with it? He signed it, The Undertaker. <laughs> I couldn't spell Kropotkin in the dark. Oh, go along with you. Irma, darling, what are you doing lying there on the sofa? I don't feel well, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, you poor child. Jane, why don't you get a doctor? Oh, I'm just about to take her to Dr. Davis. Well, I know everyone prefers their own doctor. Me? I wouldn't go to anyone but Dr. Raymond Spritzler. <laughs> He's done a lovely bit of plastic surgery for me. <laughs> That's nice. When are you going to call for it? <laughs> well, this is getting us no place. Come on, honey. We'll go see a doctor and we'll find out what's wrong with you. Oh, good morning, Miss Stacy. What can I do for you? Uh, doctor, I have my roommate, Miss Peterson, in the reception room. She's been complaining about feeling ill, and I thought yes, that... I understand. Uh, I'll see her immediately. Uh, send Miss Peterson in. Hello, doctor. Hello, Miss Peterson. I'll wait outside for you, honey. Uh, now, if you'll just sit right here, Miss Peterson. That's it. Uh, now, suppose that, first of all, we get a little case history, hmm? Well, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed, Doctor. You see, history was my worst subject. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fine sense of humor. Uh, now, tell me, have you had any chronic afflictions? Only, Al, I've liked him for years. I beg your pardon? Well, he's my fiancé, you know. Uh, yes, I, I know. Uh, Miss Peterson, we're not getting anywhere. I want to know if you recall ever having any serious illness. No. Well, when did you last see a doctor? In that picture with Lionel Barrymore. <laughs> I see. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Peterson, will you please step over here on the scales? Well, I haven't got a penny. <laughs> well, it's on the house. 
Now, please stand still. That's it. Uh-huh. Uh, 118. Am I through? No. Now, uh, yeah, slip this thermometer under your tongue. That's it. Close your mouth. Fine. Now, I'll get a chart ready for you. Emma Peterson, single. Uh, all right, now let's look at that thermometer. Hmm, 98. 98? Just wait, 118? I've lost 10 pounds. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Peterson, why don't you lie down on this couch for a moment and rest? I'll be right back. All right, I'll just listen to your radio. Uh, do you mind if I use these earphones? That's my stethoscope, but go right ahead. <laughs> well, doctor. Doctor, is it anything serious? No, I'll be all right. <laughs> I just had to get out of there for a minute. I mean, I, no, don't, don't worry, Miss Stacy. There's nothing organically wrong with the girl. I think I know the cause of her illness. I think we can bring her back to normal. Look, doctor, I don't want miracles. I just want her to get well. <laughs> What's wrong with her? Your friend is suffering from a common disease. Oh, dear, doctor, what is it? Well, it's nothing to be alarmed about. It's spring, and she's got an acute case of lovesickness. Oh, I should have known. She's eating her heart out for Al. Oh, the poor kid. I'll go in and comfort her. Irma, honey. Irma? Cookie? He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Oh, he doesn't love me. Neither will a doctor when he finds out you cut all the fingers off his rubber gloves. Ladies, did you know that swan soap actually differs from other soaps? Sure, feel a cake of swan. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says, it's a smoothie. It's a smoothie, it's a cake of swan You can feel that super cream blend You can feel the difference in it You can tell it in a minute It's a smoothie, that swan Yes, ladies, the way swan feels is a direct result of swan super creamed blend Just run your fingertips over the surface of a cake of swan Feel the smoothness See how swan super creamed blend makes swan differ from other soaps then feel Swan's suds. They feel richer, creamier. And Swan's mild suds protect your hands. Sure, when you're through, look at your hands. You'll see they're left with a smooth, soft, young look. And Swan Super Cream suds rinse away so completely, your dishes don't need wiping. You bet, Swan soap means faster dishwashing and protection for your hands, thanks to Swan's exclusive Super Creamed Blend. Diagnosed Irma's illness as lovesickness doesn't make matters one bit easier. You see, Irma happens to be in love with a man who hasn't worked for so long that, well, I'll put it this way. If Al was Stanley, the explorer, and Dr. Livingston was a job, Stanley would never have found Livingston. <laughs> I tell these things to Irma, but she keeps crying, and she's actually making herself sick. I've sent for the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly so we can have a council of war to decide what to do about Al. I just can't stand any more of Irma's suffering. Oh, sweetie. Please don't carry on like that. It's, it's not good for you. I can't help it, Jane. This is spring, the time for romance. The birds are singing, the flowers are budding. The sap is starting to fall, and I have no one to catch me. <laughs> Well, now, don't cry, honey. Things have a way of working out, you know. Why don't you go for a walk and forget your troubles, huh? All right, I, I think I'll take a walk in the park and visit the zoo. After all, that's where I met Al. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, honey. He was taking peanuts away from the monkeys. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello. Oh, Al. Al, I want you to come over here as soon as you can. Why not? What trouble are you having? With a gum machine? Didn't you get your gum? Well, you got the gum, but the string on the nickel broke. <laughs> Look, Al, you hurry right over here. Goodbye. Come in. 
only us, Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad the two of you are here. Irma's in trouble. Oh, the poor child. Now, don't worry, Jenny. If Irma's in trouble, you'll stand in back of her. Mrs. O'Reilly will stand in back of you, and I'll stand in back of Mrs. O'Reilly. You know, I don't know if this could help Irma, but this could be a very good conga line. <laughs> Please, Professor, this is serious. Now, we all know that Al has been giving Irma the runaround, and what with this being spring and June not too far off, the poor girl is lovesick. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Please, Mrs. O'Reilly, stop winking at me. <laughs> I'm tired of picking up your eyelashes. <laughs> Anyway, it seems to me that there's only one solution. Al is coming over here, and we've got to get him to commit himself to announce his engagement to Irma. But I thought they were engaged. Oh, no, just in words, Professor. I want Al to give her a ring. And then Irma will feel secure, and she'll stop worrying herself sick. In other words, we have to get Al to propose. Yeah, knowing him, I think it's hopeless. Oh, Jane, nothing is hopeless. As in the case of... Uh... Tell me, Mrs. O'Reilly, how did you trick your first husband into proposing to you? I didn't trick him. It was love at first sight. He always said my eyes were like two deep pools. My luck, I had to meet you after the dam broke. <laughs> oh, now, please, the two of you were trying to solve Irma's problem. Well, if I did propose, where will he get a ring? Has he any money? Money? Are you kidding? His pockets haven't seen his hands since that last cold spell we had. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? We've got to get him to propose. Otherwise, Irma's never going to get over her sickness. Open up, chicken. It's me, your little Al. That's him. That's him. I'll handle him, folks. If I need any help, I'll call you. All right, Jenny. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, folks. Where's chicken? Well, why is everybody staring at me? If I was your mother, I'd shoot your father. <laughs> If I was your father, I'd deserve it. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. Before we both forget we are gentlemen. <laughs> what goes here, Jane? They don't look at me that way. I've seen prosecuting attorneys with more pleasant expressions. Al, sit down. First, I want to know where Chicken is. That's what I want to talk to you about, Al. Now, you've known Irma for over a year. Check. And I assume you love her. Love her? Jane... I ain't got any flair for these poetical phrases. But believe me, when I walked down the street with my arm around Irma, I couldn't feel any better if I was carrying home a barrel of beer. <laughs> well, for you, that's kind of tender. But I want to know what you're going to do about her future. Well, naturally, I'm spending day and night working on my deals. Oh, stop with your deals. No, 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 this, this one's sure fire. I'm planning on cutting the toes and heels off the socks and selling them for spats. <laughs> You'll never make any money that way. Why don't you try stretching bottle caps and selling them for pie plates? <laughs> See, that ain't bad. You know, Jane, there's a certain undertone here that I don't like. It's like a bunch of cops whispering to each other as I pass by. Now listen to me, Al. I want to know about you and Irma. Just a minute, Jane. You may be her roommate, but my relationship with Irma is purely a personal matter. Not when it makes her sick. Not when she's out walking like she is now and crying her heart out. My chicken is sick? Oh, gee, I'd rather die than hurt my chicken. Well, then why don't you do what any man would do? Make some definite gesture to show her that you mean business. Well, I did, Jane. Why, just the other day, I went about making arrangements for our marriage. I priced a house. I looked at furniture, spoke to a minister. Then I went to the bank to arrange for a loan. Well? Spent the rest of the day canceling everything. <laughs> Look, Al, the time has come when you're going to have to do something besides make promises. But I've already told her we're engaged. Al, in case you don't know, there's a little item called an engagement ring that a girl likes to get. Been working on it. In fact, my friend Joe sold me a raffle ticket on a ring. Won the raffle, too. But something went wrong. Joe's wife woke up while he was trying to slip it off her finger. <laughs> Would you really give Irma a ring, if you had one? On my word. Well, here. What's this you're giving me, Jane? This was my grandmother's engagement ring. She gave it to me, and I want you to give it to Irma. Oh, Jane, I couldn't take this. It's, it's an heirloom. Probably means a great deal to you. It does. Not as much as Irma. And I don't want her to know that I gave it to you. 
Gee, Jane, I... I don't know what to say. I'm... I'm all choked up. How much is it worth? Never mind what it's worth. <laughs> really? When you give this ring, I want you to be looking into two blue eyes, not three gold balls. <laughs> Trust me, Jane. Don't be naive, Al. I'm going out now, and when I come back, I want to see a well Irma and an engaged Irma with a ring on her third finger left hand. Got me, Al? Gotcha, Jane. Gee, looks like a pretty expensive ring. It's got two diamonds on each side. In that case, there's only one man to call. Who else but... Hello, Joe. Al, <laughs> got a problem. Just received a ring with two diamonds. What do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Only one man to handle it? Friendly Freddy, the philosophical fence? <laughs> well, where is he located? Well, he's with an old Southern family on their farm? Oh, the prison farm in Georgia. <laughs> no, no, Joe. This, this ring is legitimate. You see, I got to give it... Oh, Joe, what am I doing? What am I talking to you for? This is for my girl. The whole thing is on the up and up. Sorry I took up your time. Was merely acting on a natural impulse. Got carried away by the diamonds. Forget it, Joe. We'll call you on another proposition. Goodbye. Al, sometimes you get mighty close to being a bum. Oh, Jane. Oh, why, Al, what are you doing here? Hi, you chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Chicken... There's something very important I want to ask you. All right, Al, shall we go over to the sofa? No, this is important. <laughs> Let's go over to the sink. The sink? All right, Al. Good. Now, listen, I'll, I'll turn the faucet on. There. Pretty romantic, huh? <laughs> what? Chicken, ain't you got no imagination? That's Niagara Falls. <laughs> No one could have said it any nicer. I do. Chicken, we are now engaged. And to make it legal, I am going to give you an engagement ring. Oh, Al, this is a moment I've waited for. Let me see the ring. That, 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 not yet, Chicken. Want to do this in such a way that you'll never forget it. Now we'll sit over here on the sofa. Oh, hurry, Al. I'm as excited as an expectant father walking up and down in front of a maternity house. <laughs> Feel the same way, Chicken. Now turn down the lights. They're down. Good. Now, Chicken, close your eyes. They're closed. Now, beloved, as behooves the occasion, I would like to make a speech to mark this wonderful moment. Oh, go ahead, Al. I can hear you even though my eyes are closed. <laughs> chicken, I have looked the whole world over for a fair maiden to share my worldly possession. I admit most of my possessions are no longer in my possession. <laughs> because they've already been possessed. And those I possess, I cannot get. Because they're in a place from which I have been dispossessed. Go ahead, Al. It's beautiful. But east is east, and west is west. And as Mark Twain said, we have met. <laughs> and having met, I hereby with this ring, thee do engage. Your hand, my love. Here, Al. Al, what's the matter? Can't find the ring. Oh, Al. Turn the lights on, chicken. Can't understand. I just had it in my hand. It must have fallen on the sofa. Help me look for it, chicken. Hey, wait a minute, Al. Are you sure you had a ring? Positive. Well, where did you get it? Well, uh, uh, gee, I can't see it any place. Al, where would you get a ring? Uh, from my great-great-grandmother. I never told you about her because it would make you sad. You see... She's dead. <laughs> well, I don't believe you ever had a ring. This is just another one of your jokes, and I never want to see you again. Chicken, believe me, I wouldn't kid you. To me, marriage is a sacred honor, like not turning state's evidence on a close member of the family. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Al. I can't believe you, and I never want to see you again. Goodbye. Well, Chicken, Ooh. if that's the way you want it, goodbye. Oh, hello. What's that? You want to 
want to reserve four seats for a streetcar named Desire. You've got the wrong number. Besides, can't you tell I'm crying? My heart is breaking. For all I care, you can take the subway. <laughs> oh, Jane. Oh. oh, Irma, you're still <gasps> crying. Didn't you see Al? Yes, and I never want to see him again. Oh, but, 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 sweetie, didn't he give you, uh, uh, did, didn't he give you something? No, all he did was put out the lights and tell me to close my eyes. Then he pretended he lost a ring. What? <laughs> lost it? Oh, Jane, you know, Al, where would he get a ring? Where would he oh. get it? Why, I get... I... Oh, I... Oh, Irma, if anything has happened to that ring, I'll... Irma, what's the matter with you now? What do you mean? Well, you're limping. Honey, take your shoe off. All right, Jane. Jane, look, it's a ring. Oh, oh, thank heaven. There, you see, you see, honey, Al wasn't lying after all. Uh, oh. <laughs> now, what are you crying about? We're not engaged. The ring is on the wrong foot. <laughs> Have you heard? Have you heard? Yes, ladies, have you heard about the exciting lever buy two sale? Listen, your dealer can help you get some modern heavy gauge aluminum ware for your kitchen. You save from 33 and a third to 50% on it. You can get a set of two 8 inch cake pans worth $1.15 for only 75 cents. Or a two quart saucepan with cover or a nine inch frying pan worth $2 each. For only one dollar a piece. They're the famous Regal Aluminum Ware, the really perfect modern kitchen ware. Yes, and they're made with inside sunray finish. So bright, so beautiful. Now here's all you do to get them. Send in box tops or wrappers from any two of these lever products. Lux Flakes, Rinso, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Silver Dust, Spry, or Swan. Your dealer will give you handy order blanks as well as the other information you need. The orders will be sent postpaid within three weeks. The offer expires August 1st, 1948. It is subject to state and local regulations. Just send your money together with box tops or wrappers from two Lever products and your name and address to Lever Homemakers Club, Box 1, New York City. put the ring on the right foot, I mean, the right finger, and Irma's engaged, and she's happy again. Right now, she's bending over her hope chest. Sweetie, what are you doing with the double harness? Well, they say when you get married, you should pull as a team. <laughs> and you know, automobiles may have replaced horses, but nothing will ever replace my friend, Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to My Friend Irma, starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Ladies, listen, the shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Prime. Cakes are light and high. Prime. There's a reason why. Prime. Cakes improve with Prime. Rely on Spry. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, try Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry. S P R Y. Rely on Spry. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.